So we hear we hear at QNX at the Embedded World 2011, and um, here you have a playbook. Yes, I do. Just boot it up. Mm -hmm. So what is the software there? The software inside the playbook is the BlackBerry Tablet OS. That's the operating system that's powering the playbook. And the BlackBerry Tablet OS is obviously based on QNX Neutrino, our real-time operating system. So is that something that has been happening for a long time, or is it just for the playbook that kind of started? QNX Neutrino is an operating system that's been around for many years. QNX as a company has been around for 30 years and always dedicated and focused on real-time real -time performance. Um, and with respect to the playbook, we've been working with REM for quite some time now to make sure that we take our operating system, make sure we optimize it for the playbook, and of course enable all of the great functionality you'll find on the device. But is that different from the previous BlackBerry devices? Yes, the, the, the use of QNX Neutrino as part of the BlackBerry Tablet OS is new, yes, and okay. for playbook. All right, so um, this is a, a big deal, right? I mean, uh, people have been saying, some people have been saying it was the coolest device at CES, and uh, is, that, is right. the reason software, or? I think the reason is, I think the reason is the integration of the hardware and the software and the applications, because I think it's an overall product that people are looking at. So obviously you need a hardware platform um, that is conducive to the consumer market. You need an operating system that can really drive the performance. You need a framework to enable the applications and, of course, the applications themselves. So, so you work with TI, Texas Instruments, to optimize things, the speed and all that, and hardware acceleration? Absolutely. You did a lot of that? Absolutely, yes. And how long did that take to make that work? It wasn't an easy task, but yeah. I know it was a lot of people, a lot of engineering talent from TI as well as QNX, um, specifically to make take full advantage of the 4430 OMAP processor. So, so yeah, a lot of hard work. So what kind of areas in that processor can you take advantage of? Um, one of the keys to to the four, one of the keys to the, uh, the the playbook, excuse me, um, and and the OMAP 4430 is to be able to take advantage of the symmetric multiprocessing or SMP that the 4430 has, because as you know, it's a gigahertz dual core processor. So that in itself is an enabler, and then taking QNIX and our, the, our SMP capabilities that we've had since 1997, um, taking that and fully enabling the 4430 is really what brings it to life. So would you say QNIX has one of the best um, um, multi-core uh, utilization, like SMP? Uh... Absolutely. And we that's... Were, absolutely. We were doing symmetric multiprocessing when multi-core integrated parts weren't common. So essentially you'd have two discrete parts and we were enabling that in an SMP environment. Now that you're finding dual core, quad core, eight core parts, um, and QNIX has been supporting those for quite some time, we're bringing that capability to, uh, to Playbook. As you know, Cisco uses QNIX in their largest routers, their core routers, and those are, of course, multi-core devices and, and uh, devices that are spread across backplane and whatnot. So we're used to scaling, we're used to making use of multiple cores. And now that the ARM Cortex A9s are coming like crazy and everybody's like going crazy over them and it's coming like crazy, that means a bright future for QNIX. Absolutely, absolutely. We work very closely with ARM and the ARM licensees and we are, our roadmap will reflect that going forward. So uh, p people have been talking about how, how fast it is, right, when, yep. when you do multitasking. Can you explain a little bit how that can be done in software? Well, that. Uh, it, it, it seems like everything is running at the same time and nothing slows down. Is that true? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, again, one of the keys of from QNIX. Our heritage is real-time processing, is performance, determinism. That's what really made QNIX successful over the years and continues to make QNIX successful. So if you try to open a couple of things. Sure. And, uh, uh, let's see what we've got here. I'll bring on some video. So it's playing video, and then you can uh, have something else uh, also at the same time. Yes, again. The video just continues. Is that just part of the like a kind of like a demo feature to have it running, and it's going to be actually like this for consumers? Actually, no, definitely yeah. for consumers. You'll be able to have video on the device itself. You'll obviously be able to access the internet. This isn't enabled for wireless right now in terms of in the booth here, okay. but. And then you can have uh, other stuff. You can even play a game at the same time, maybe. Yeah. Here, I'll tell you what I'll bring up. Um, let me just see here. I'll give you an example of the 3D capabilities and some of the performance that we've done, performance optimizations that we've done in the 3D space. So what is the difference in terms of uh, software work between all this UI, fancy UI stuff and uh, perhaps the core of something? Like, uh, is there like a, is it completely separate or is it really integrated somehow? The key is the integration. Absolutely the key is the integration. So you take really from the hardware platform moving forward, so the 4430 and the devices built around it and the, the graphics processor as well, 
So if you take that and then you add an operating system platform like Qunix that can take full advantage and optimize for the dual core ARM part, as well as for graphics, as well as the other interfaces on the device, that's what you really need to have a platform that can enable this level of performance and can give us 3D, you can see the performance that we're achieving here. In a demo application, you can see things that are running simultaneously. Obviously, my HD video is still running here. Um, let's bring that up. So this kind of performance, and for people that can appreciate graphics, it's this kind of performance that they'll see and they'll appreciate and truly um, recognize the benefit of having an operating system like Unix and an operating system like BlackBerry Tablet OS powering Playbook. Some people have been saying that it, it might have been a little bit inspired by WebOS, uh, this kind of uh, UI. Is, uh, is it, has there been like some precedent where actually Qunix was showing this kind of UI before or somebody or? Qunix has been working on user interfaces and had user interface technology yeah. for quite a while. As you know, we have a, a strong heritage in a lot yeah. of design wins in automotive. And there really is, I'll say, some convergence between automotive user interfaces and consumer. Because yeah. the consumer is looking for that kind of experience in the car. So we've been working on these types of interfaces for quite some time. So taking that knowledge that we have and obviously research in motion and the experience that they have, bring those two together. And I think they've done some really fantastic things with the user interface. So what about apps? Uh, let's say this this platform there, BlackBerry, uh, will try to get developers to make apps with yeah. and. Uh, can you say something about how that the that app ecosystem is going to work, or is that um, something they manage, or is it really, very much related to how Qunix does things? It's a combination of, of uh, RIM as well as Qunix working together. But the as you know, there's an SDK that has been published. Uh, it was published, I believe, in November, and of course that will be updated. And there's other SDKs that will be available to to enable that developer community. One of the keys, obviously, to Playbook is the application base that they're going to have. So we're quite excited that we have a platform that's on the BlackBerry ta or that's on the Playbook, sorry, um, with Adobe Air that's going to enable that that application base and that application ecosystem to truly drive that type of. Is Adobe Air a big part of that app system? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yes, we've been working very, very closely with Adobe. It's been a great experience. We're and. The key to success is working very closely with, say, the hardware vendors, the software vendors, the application designers, and truly working in lockstep with them to bring, make sure that we're all working together, that everything is optimized for the device. Can the apps use native code and like uh, go all the way deep to the hardware uh, using a hardware acceleration for everything, yeah. we're, basically? We're working on SDKs that will enable that, yes. All right. Yeah. And, uh, does it make sense? Because some people have been suggesting or rumoring on the internet that it could be a Delvic engine and that you can basically support all the Android apps. I can't comment on that. But it, it, in theory, it wouldn't be a conflict, uh, conflict with Qunix to, to, to make a... Like a some, yeah. Could it be called like a different kind of Android? or? You'd have to ask Research in Motion about that. I really, I really can't comment, and to be honest, I really don't know anything about it. I'm, right. I'm reading the rumors like you are. All right. Yeah. Cool. And uh, so is it coming in many other products? What, what's coming in many other products? Your solution. Something like that, that kind of grade of uh, dual Cortex A9 uh, Qunix part. Oh, we're... The, the, the Qunix and, and dual core, multi core, and ARM, if you like, have yeah. been deployed in the automotive space for sure, but also beyond automotive. In we're, Cortex A9s? Coming. Coming. And most of that is obviously under NDA. Okay. Um, so yes, yes. We'll see a lot of uh, uh, consumer products. Oh, for sure, absolutely, right. for sure, definitely. Cool. Yeah. yeah.